In this segment, we're going to talk about n-gram language modeling. Language modeling is one way of placing distributions over sentences. And there are many ways to place a distribution over sentences. We could, for example, do it with uh, a probabilistic context-free grammar, um, which models a tree, but also we can think of as generating a bunch of words in a sentence. N-grams are going to do something uh, a little bit simpler. We are going to say that the probability of a sequence of words, which I'll write out explicitly as w1 through wm, uh, can be written as just the product of each word, the probability of each word conditioned on the previous words using the chain rule. Uh, so Essentially, each word conditions on all of the past words so far, and this is just true uh, because of the chain rule of probability. Now, an n-gram language model makes a simplifying assumption about this distribution that's going to allow us to actually model it and do parameter estimation, etc. Uh, so an n-gram LM defines P of W in the following way is the product of i equals 1 to m. It generates word wi conditioned on the previous n minus 1 words. OK, so we didn't get very far in the expansion above, but once, once you get up to, say, w10, it's going to condition on all past nine words. And in an n-gram language model, we simplify that and only condition on the past n minus 1. And n typically has values that are something like you know 3 through 7 or something like that. So let me just illustrate what a 2-gram LM looks like. We're going to use this bracket s as a start of sentence symbol here. So when we generate the first word, I'm just going to write it that we condition on a start of sentence symbol rather than having like a separate distribution over words here. Um, this way, just everything looks like two grams. And so on and so forth. So you notice that w3 is conditionally independent of w1 given w2. And so an n-gram LM basically corresponds to a n minus 1 order Markov model. And so in this case, for example, uh, we recover our so-called first-order Markov model that we saw in HMMs for part of speech tagging. Each, uh, in that case, tag conditioned on the one before it, and here each word conditions on the one before that one. All right, and so then a three-gram language model, uh, just to make it completely explicit, we are now going to have two start of sentence tokens. and so on and so forth. So what we see here is that uh, we've dramatically simplified the amount of context that each word looks at. And so we're going to kind of think about whether statistically this is a good assumption or not. Uh, from a modeling perspective, it throws out a lot of context that we might otherwise find useful. Uh, we're going to look at some cases later where Look, being able to look back many words is probably important for knowing what word's about to come next. However, what it does is it can allow us to model this in a fairly simple way and dramatically reduce the number of parameters that we need. So the typical way that we do this, uh, I'm just going to take the case of a two-gram model, is we use multinomial distributions. So what we have is where we're going to let v denote the size of the vocabulary. We have v by v parameters. 
And what do these parameters look like? Uh, the parameters look like a table of probabilities for each possible word that can follow a context word. For, so for example, if we look at uh, what words come after the, we're generally going to end up with some very flat distribution Over, a bun over the following words, because if we only see the word the, we have no idea what's coming up next, and so we're not going to have a lot of constraints to tell us, oh, okay, we're in some very specific context that only like one word can come next. No, we generally these have sort of the same property as skip gram models. We're going to draw some additional connections later, but these have the same property as skip gram models in that it's a very under-constrained problem. We don't know exactly what's going to come up next, and so even uh, a well-trained model is going to place some very flat distribution like this. All right, so the way we estimate parameters is by maximum likelihood estimation, or MLE, from a large corpus. Now, like we saw in the case of HMMs, there's a problem here in that we're not going to necessarily see every pair of words, right? And once you get up into higher order n-grams, you're certainly not going to see uh, a large number of you know, words that occur after this set of four words in the context. So, we're going to need to look at smoothing techniques, which we'll do in a future segment. Uh, but for right now, we're just going to say that p of dog given the is going to be defined by count of the dog over count of the in some big corpus. So it's however many times we see the, and then how many times did we see dog continue that? If it, if it came afterwards, 10% uh, of the time, then we get this probability being one-tenth, and that's the maximum likelihood estimate here. All right, so what we could do now is if I give you a large corpus of data, you can compute these counts for various kinds of n-gram orders, and then compute these language modeling probabilities. But as we've said, this, doesn't, this isn't some sort of uh, magic trick in that it doesn't tell you uh, it doesn't tell you what word's going to come up next. It's only going to give you a kind of rough sense, a rough probability distribution. So why is this useful? So there are a few things that uh, n-gram LMs have historically been used for. Uh, the first is generation. Uh, and specifically in machine translation. Typically the way a phrase-based machine translation system works is you have a bunch of candidate translations of chunks of the source sentence, whatever sentence you're trying to translate into another language. And when you put those candidate translations together, you're like assembling these pair, these like phrases, you're kind of gluing them together in this pairwise fashion. And what you use an n-gram language model for is to assess, okay, this stitching together of all these individual phrases, did I do that in a way that is, uh, kind of gives me plausible language in whatever language I'm translating into in that it should have reasonably high probability under one of these language models. Uh, another application is grammatical error correction. So if we want to build a system that can take some text that might have some grammar errors in it and figure out, uh, let's say you use the wrong choice of article somewhere, um, what we can do is we can try checking, okay, do other uh, articles like dramatically increase the language modeling probability? So can it help us find text that's ungrammatical but more like the, the, or something like that, right? Which should have pretty low probability under one of these models. Uh, and the final application is not of n-gram language modeling per se, but of language modeling more general. Um, it's a way to build 
uh, what I'm going to call word to vec plus plus. Uh, and so uh, language models, basically the task of trying to predict the next word in general requires drawing on a lot of cues from text. And just like we saw that skipgram is a useful way of learning word embeddings by just saying, okay, what other words can occur with this one? We can take this language modeling task and turn it into something more sophisticated and then use that to, uh, and then use that to build a more powerful set of word embeddings later. So for now, we've seen that we can take a corpus, estimate these probabilities from it, and build a simple n-gram language model, uh, and that's it for this segment.